AI is not a shiny new toy anymore. In 2025 and beyond, it's become the backbone of email marketing. 63% of marketers are already running their campaigns with AI. But here's the thing, most people still use AI completely wrong. They let it spit out generic copy that sounds like a robot wrote it because well, it did. They create creepy personalization that makes customers uncomfortable. Worst of all, they produce what I call AI slop, content that's technically correct, but completely soulless. And the result? Unsubscribes, lots and lots of them. But when AI is done right, and I mean really right, it doesn't just save you time. It drives serious return on investment. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Casey, I run Luck & Go Agency, where we help eight and nine figure e-commerce brands run their email and SMS marketing and turn it into serious revenue drivers. And today I'm going to show you exactly how we use AI to complement our work in creating emails that customers actually want to read and most importantly, buy from. I will walk you through three different frameworks that my team and I use in our work. These are in theory. These are real techniques and systems that drive real revenue. Revenue. And plus, I'll share the exact prompts that you can steal and use today and explain where human judgment still beats the machine every single time. So if you're ready to stop creating AI slop and start creating AI gold, let's dive in. The first framework is what I call the competitive context lens. And the goal here is simple. See what actually works in your niche, steal the patterns without stealing the copy and deploy intelligence, not just pretty design ideas. Now, most people approach competitive analysis completely wrong. They go to a site like mild.com or really good emails and they grab 20 screenshots, drop them into ChatGPT and ask it to analyze. Okay, that's better than nothing, but it mostly gives you design trivia. Button colors, layouts, header styles. Interesting? Sure. But do they work when you blindly copy them from compet competitors? Not really. You always have to test it for your audience. What you actually want is intelligence. How do competitors position themselves? Which emotional hooks do they repeat over and over? And most importantly, what gaps can you exploit? And because subscriber and customer preferences differ wildly between audiences, you shouldn't just copy blindly. You identify patterns, then you test those patterns on your own list to see what really works for your specific customers. Let me show you exactly how to do this. Step A, collect the right data. First, you're going to collect competitor emails but strategically. Open up mill.com. Search for three to five brands that are direct competitors, not just in your industry, but targeting the same customer profile that you are. That's the key piece here. The customer, understanding your customer is the foundation of everything that you do. I always say that to everybody we work with. So download 20 to 30 recent emails per brand as PNGs. Don't just grab the promotional emails, get their welcome sequences, their abandoned cart emails, their retention campaigns. And if mill.com doesn't have them, subscribe with your own email address and grab screenshots from your own inbox. You want the full picture of how they communicate. Step B, analyze with strategic intelligence. This is where most people mess up the prompting. They ask AI to analyze these emails and get back surface level observations. Instead, you're going to use what I call deep strategic analysis. Here's the prompt framework I use. This is the shortened version for the video and there's a longer version in the description under the video. First, define a role for AI. You're a senior e-commerce email strategist with 10 plus years of PNL ownership. Reason silently and provide only final outputs. Next objective, extract revenue intelligence from these competitor emails. I do not want design trivia. I want money movable insights I can deploy within 14 days. Then give some context. Your brand name, the niche, primary goal of the cycle, for example, increase promotional revenue by 20%, and the constraints that you have. No verbatim coping, paraphrase competitor language, keep US English, and so on. No emojis, whatever, whatever you prefer. Next, define output. Number one, top three revenue plays with proof, target segment, expected impact, and ICE score. Number two, positioning pattern frequencies and jobs to be done insights. Three, offer construction and urgency patterns, plus common pitfalls to avoid. Four, ranked emotional triggers with specific deployment tactics. Five, five gaps we can exploit in the next 14 days. Six, do versus don'ts table with eight plus actionable rows for the copy team. Seven, 14 day test plan with sample sizes, success metrics, and decision rules. Eight, copy bank. 
15 subject lines, 15 preheaders, 10 CTAs, all tagged by trigger and angle. Now, again, this is the short version of the prompt that we use. And if you want the complete version of it, I've put the link in the description. You can download it and start using it immediately. Step C, prioritize for maximum impact. Once you get your analysis back, don't try to implement everything all at once. Let's be honest, that was a pretty long, short version of the prompt, and you're going to get a lot back. And if you try to implement it all at once, that's a recipe for confusion and mediocre results. Instead, ask AI to summarize the top three money-making plays from this analysis. Each one should include why it works psychologically, which segment it's most likely to resonate with, and an ICE score, that's impact, confidence, and effort on a scale of one to 10. Focus on high impact and high confidence strategies first, and then leave the experimental stuff for later. Step D, test on your actual list. And here's the crucial part that most people skip. Competitor insights are just hypotheses. Your subscribers behave differently than their subscribers. So you test everything. This is how you turn competitor intelligence into actual revenue. I recommend testing actual content of emails as opposed to just subject lines. So for example, if your competitor analysis told you that your competitors use the social proof angle really effectively and maybe a specific way in which they use that, then you create two versions of your email. One where the first, the top section of the email is clearly focused on that. And variation B of that email is where the content is something else, something that you'd usually make it. And then the rest of the emails can even be the same. And then you A-B test that with your audience and you know the percentages and the sample size really depends on how big your audience is. And then you take that data and see whether that's working for your audience as well or not really. Step E, turn insights into action. Finally, don't let those insights just sit in a document somewhere. Ask AI to turn the winning patterns into a one-page creative brief for your copy and design team. That way, the intelligence doesn't just exist. It gets deployed into real campaigns that make real money. And here's a stat for context. AI-assisted subject lines commonly lift open rates by 15 to 30% when they're properly A-B tested at scale. But you'll only see those lifts if you test at volume and keep your winner logic clean. So once you've pulled those insights from competitor emails, the next question is, how do you actually put them into play without drowning in setup? That's where today's sponsor, OmniSend, comes in. It's an email and SMS platform built specifically for e-commerce, and it makes moving from idea to a live campaign really smooth. OmniSend's AI tools are integrated right where you need them. You can describe an audience in plain language like VIPs who haven't purchased this month. And the AI segment builder creates the rules for you. No spreadsheets, no manual filters. OmniSend's AI also supports the creative side right inside your automations. You can generate subject lines and pre-headers while you're building the flow. No copy paste from an outside tool and test them instantly. And for retention, features like churn prediction and RFM analysis let you identify at-risk customers and re-engage them before they drop off. Add that to the direct Shopify segment sync and all the core automations, welcome abandoned cart, browse abandoned, ready out of the box, and you've got a platform that saves time while keeping campaigns smart. You can start an OmniSense for free using my link in the description, and don't forget to use the code KC30 to get 30% off your first three months. Also check out the other two videos that I have on this channel specifically about OmniSend setup and setting up campaigns in your brand new OmniSend account. The Customer Echo Lab. Now let's move to the second framework. And this one is my personal favorite because it's so simple yet incredibly powerful. The goal here is to make copy that sounds exactly like your buyers because it literally uses their words. And the best part, you're going to keep improving it every single cycle based on what actually works. Here's how this strategy plays out. First, you're going to export any reviews and testimonials you have from your store app as a CSV file. If you're using Shopify, you can get this from your reviews app. If you're on a different platform, most review systems let you export this data. And if they don't, shame on them, ask them to get that data from them. So that CSV file, that's pure gold. 
It's your customers describing your product in their own words, talking about the problems you solved for them and explaining exactly how they use what you sell. Once you've got that file, drop it into ChatGPT or Claude with this prompt. You're a senior conversion copywriter. Analyze this file with customer reviews and build me a phrase bank. I want you to collect the exact benefit phrases customers repeat most often. Identify the problems or hesitations they mentioned before buying and capture the specific use cases and situations where they describe using the product. Then cluster each list into five to seven themes, give each theme a short campaign style label, and include a couple of exact customer quotes under each theme. What you'll get back is a phrase bank that sounds exactly like your buyers because, well, it is your buyers talking. And if you want the full detailed version of this prompt, because there is a longer version, the one that I actually use with my team, I've put it in the video description so that you can copy and paste it directly. Turning phrases into profit. Here's where it gets interesting. Once you have the phrase bank, you're going to turn it into copy that converts. Ask ChatGPT. For each theme, write me three subject lines and three preheaders. Keep subject lines between four and seven words, preheaders around 30 to 50 characters. Use at least one customer phrase from each cluster and give me two variations, one curiosity driven and one friendly and direct. Subject lines and preheaders are your on ramp. They're short, testable, and you can use them immediately. But this framework goes way deeper than that. You can generate CTAs that echo customer language. You can draft body copy lines, two to three sentence openings, or transitions that weave in an actual customer quote for social proof. You can also create value prop bullets for your campaigns or automations, all written in the language that your customers actually speak. Kill the AI slop. But before anything goes live, there's one step that I never skip, and I call it kill the AI slop. Because AI is fast, but when left unchecked, it sounds like, well, AI. And by now we can all spot machine written copy from a mile away. And I actually am fascinated with how fast people who use AI develop that sense, that sixth sense that tells them immediately, okay, I know this was written by AI. My kill the AI slop rules are simple. Short sentences, 12 to 15 words maximum, active voice only, cut all the cliches and hype words like game changer, unlock, skyrocket, revolutionary, remove filler words, really very actually basically literally, eliminate corporate buzzwords, leverage, utilize, disrupt, cutting edge. Write like you're talking to one person, not writing a press release. This one is key. Use concrete details and benefits whenever possible. No markdown formatting or emojis unless I specifically ask for them. When you read it out loud, it should sound natural and conversational. Stick to one clear CTA phrased simply. And here's the key, leave small imperfections if they make the copy feel more human. Test and optimize. Finally, you test everything. Pick two subject lines per theme, A-B test them across 10 to 20% of your email list, and then roll out the winner to everyone else. And here's a step most people skip, close the loop. Feed your campaign results back into ChatGPT and then tell it which themes, phrases, and CTAs performed better. Ask it to re-rank your themes and regenerate copy based on what actually worked with your audience. That way your phrase bank isn't static. It gets sharper and more effective every single cycle. The real power of this framework isn't just better subject lines and preheaders. It's that it gives you a systematic source of customer language that you can use across all of your email copy and actually across all of your marketing. Welcome sequences, promotional campaigns, retention emails, Everything sounds like your customers because it's built from their actual words. And you can take it further into your ads, into your social media and everything else. The third framework is what I call the revenue rescue system. And the goal here is simple, recover lost revenue from campaigns you've already sent. Instead of only creating new emails, we use AI to spot the weak links in past campaigns and fix them fast. This is one of my favorite strategies because you're working with proven concepts, emails that already went out that your team created, and you're just optimizing the parts that didn't work. Here's how to do it. Step one, export your data. Export the results from your last three months of email campaigns. You want open rates, click-through rates, and conversions in a simple CSV file. Most email platforms make it easy. Just go to your campaign reports and download that data. Step two, find the weak links. Drop that file into ChatGPT and use this prompt. You are an email performance analyst with 10 plus years of experience. Analyze this campaign data and identify revenue leaks. Flag campaigns where clicks were solid, but conversions were low. For each flagged campaign, tell me what the weak link likely is. Subject line, 
pre-header. Most platforms won't actually export the content of the email through the campaign export. So once you have a list of emails, you can go back to your platform or the inbox where you're keeping copies of all the emails that you send because you're a smart email marketer and take screenshots of that. Drop that into ChatGPT as well or whatever AI you're using. And then you can ask things beyond the subject line and the pre-header such as body copy, CTA and offer framing. And continuing the prompt, you need to ask AI to suggest a concrete rewrite for only that weak link while keeping the rest of the campaign intact. What you will get back is a prioritized list of your biggest revenue opportunities, campaigns that were almost successful with specific fixes for the parts that held them back. Step three, run rescue tests. Pick two of those rewrites and run them as rescue A-B tests. This is faster than creating entirely new campaigns and often the performance lift is dramatic because you're fixing a proven concept instead of starting from scratch. And we know this works. HubSpot reported an 82 increase in conversions when they applied AI optimization, not just to subject lines, but across every element of their emails. When you fix the weakest link in the chain, everything else performs better. The perfection paradox fix. Here's a bonus insight that most people miss. AI sometimes writes emails that are too perfect. Recent research shows this can actually hurt performance because overly polished AI copy feels robotic and impersonal. To all of those perfectionists out there, people actually don't like when things are way too perfect. So when I ask for rewrites, I also ask AI to give me an imperfect variation, maybe a subject line that's a little bit more casual or a body paragraph with a little more personality than usual. Then I test polished AI versus imperfect AI. And more often than not, the imperfect version wins because it feels more authentic and more human. Where humans still beat the machine. Before we wrap up today, I want to share where I think human judgment still beats AI every single time because AI is powerful, but it's definitely not the whole answer. First of all, context. AI doesn't know when it's inappropriate to send a cheerful promotional email during a crisis or a major cultural event. Humans bring situational awareness that AI simply cannot match. Second, emotional nuance. Studies show that AI is excellent at pattern recognition, but humans still provide superior emotional intelligence and cultural sensitivity. AI can optimize your timing and subject lines, but it can't truly feel the tone of a message. Third, authenticity. Research has found that when customers believe emotional messages were written by AI, trust and loyalty actually drop. Some studies show that disclosure help build trust, others show that it hurts ad performance. The key is being transparent while keeping human editors in the loop. You definitely don't want to get rid of your humans. Fourth, privacy concerns. KPMG found that 63% of consumers worry about how generative AI uses their personal data. Avoid creepy personalization that references too much personal information. Reference behavior patterns, not individual identities. And finally, strategic imperfection. Remember that perfection paradox I just mentioned? Overpolished AI emails can trigger suspicion in your subscribers. Only a human can look at copy and say, hey, this feels and looks too sleek. Let's roughen it up so that it feels authentic. So the future isn't AI replacing email marketers. It's AI doing the heavy lifting while humans make sure that campaigns are contextually appropriate, emotionally intelligent, ethically sound, and authentically imperfect. That's the balance that actually wins in 2025. The biggest takeaway here is this. AI isn't about replacing human creativity. It's about amplifying it. Use these three frameworks to let AI handle the heavy lifting, but always keep human judgment in the driver's seat. Okay, so tell me in the comments which of these frameworks you are going to try first. Again, my favorite is the second one, but I'd love to hear what's working for you. So drop a comment. And if you want more strategies like I shared in this video for turning your email marketing into serious revenue, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. I will see you in the next video.